So the traveling salesman problem, uh, just by way, of, by way of a quick review here, uh, starts with a weighted graph like the one we've got here. And our goal is to find the cheapest possible circuit through the graph. In other words, uh, we're trying to find a, a walk that touches every vertex exactly once and that ends back at the same place where it started. So you want to you kind of think of this as being, you know, you're a traveling salesman and you have to uh, visit all of the cities in your territory. Uh, you don't want to visit a city more than once and you want to do it uh, in such a way that the cost of your trip is minimized. So in the last uh, lecture, we talked about the nearest neighbor method for solving this. And remember, there are no known exact algorithms for answering this question that can execute in a reasonable amount of time, even for really large graphs. So what we're doing here is uh, we're talking about methods that give us a reasonably good approximate answer. Right, so like I said, last, last lecture we talked about something called the nearest neighbor method. In this lecture, we're going to talk about uh, another approach to this, to this solution called the best edge method. So the best edge method, uh, it does have some similarities to the nearest neighbor method in that it, it's iterative, where we're going to just do this, these steps over and over and over again until we finally end up with the kind of circuit that we're looking for. So the way this method works is you're going to start by looking at the graph, picking out the absolute cheapest edge, the one with the absolute lowest cost, and you're going to add that one to the solution. Then remove it from the original graph. And then we repeat this over and over again. Right now, now we look for the next cheapest, add that to our solution, next cheapest, and so on. Uh, of course, as, as we go along, we want to avoid adding an edge that would create a circuit prematurely, right? We, we don't want to create any circuits as we go along, uh, and this ends when we have connected uh, every possible, uh, connected all the vertices. So that sounds great on paper, right? Uh, you're welcome to read this over if you like, but I, th I think this gets a lot clearer if we actually look at an example, right? So. So I've got a graph here for us to look at. Uh, and on the right-hand side, uh, I, I've kind of duplicated the graph, but just with the vertices. Right, so we now we, we'll build up our final answer by pulling edges out of the original graph. So I'm going to start uh, by adding the edge connecting vertices F and C, because 4 is the absolute cheapest edge in the entire graph. Then I'll remove it. From the original so we're not tempted to accidentally add it again all right now the next cheapest i think that's going to be uh ac that's that uh five weight edge so let's add that one to our solution and remove it from the original uh, now i think our our next best option is be that's the six so if we add that and remove it now how are we doing um next i think we're going to get the seven from e to c and we'll remove that as well and now uh, we're down to that eight connecting d and c but i don't want to add that one right because if i add that one for that to work, our salesman is going to have to visit uh, location C more than once, right? I, I don't want to have uh, any vertex that has a degree greater than two. So I'm going to skip that one, and I'm going to look to the nines, and I, I've got a couple options here. Uh, I don't want to include ED. I'm not going to pick that one for the same reason I didn't pick DC. Uh, but I, I do have two other viable options, FD and DB. When you're faced with this situation, you essentially flip a coin and you, you pick at random. So I'm going to add FD. Uh, and that now takes, uh, takes away BD. I can't add BD now because that would bring the degree of D up to 3. 
And you, you can keep walking through these vertices if you like, but when, when you're doing these, uh, if you're looking ahead just a little bit, uh, it's almost done. If we start at A, we go to D, F, C, E, B. We've touched every vertex at that point. All we need to do at this point is bring our guy home, right? So I'm going to do that by adding A, B, uh, and there's my final answer. All right, so I've written that out here. Uh, starting at A, you can start at anywhere within the circuit. It doesn't matter. You're going to cover every place eventually. Uh, and the total cost of this trip would be 42 units. Okay, so that's the method, right? You, you Hopefully you, you've got an idea how this works. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about greedy algorithms. I know we did that in the last lecture as well, right? So it's okay if you want to skip over that, uh, if you've been following along. Um, then we'll talk about uh, what our next step is. So uh, this this is a class in, in, in graph theory. We're talking about it at the moment, not a class in algorithms. But I, I do want to talk for just a minute, since a lot of the people watching this will be uh, computer science students, uh, about the algorithmic aspects of this. This um, nearest neighbor method is an example of what, in algorithm design, is called a greedy algorithm. And, and a greedy algorithm has a, a couple of characteristics. First, it's based on making decisions, right? You build solutions by making a sequence of choices. And you saw that in what, in what we did, right? At, at, at first, I chose the starting vertex, and then I chose the best vertex from there, and then I chose the best vertex from there, and so on. So I, I was a sequence of choices that I was making. And each decision is based strictly on local conditions. So when, when I was picking the next vertex, all I looked at was the next vertex relative to the vertex I was currently on. A greedy algorithm has no capacity to look ahead and say, well, you know, I, I, I know this is my best choice now, but if I make that choice, it's going to force me into situations down the road where I have to make some really bad choices. That, that's the sense in which this is greedy. It, it, it's very much in the moment, right? has no way of, uh, of looking beyond that. So some of the downfalls of, of greedy algorithms, uh, and we saw this in our example, the order in which the choices are made can significantly impact the outcome. In this case, my very first choice, what my starting point was, made a, a pretty decent difference uh, in my final outcomes. Another area where this could, can come up when we almost had this happen is what about if you have a tie? What, what if you have two vertices, both of which have the lowest cost? Well, with greedy algorithms, what you'll usually do uh, is choose at random, right? Where, again, again, if you're kind of a human looking at this, you want to say, okay, well, what's, what's my next choice? If, if I choose option A, what's my lowest cost choice from there, and if I choose option B, what's my lowest cost choice from there, and you can kind of use that next step to inform your decisions. Well, greedy algorithms can't do that. They're all about what, what's happening right here where we are at the moment. Uh, and finally, a, a, as we saw, uh, these algorithms are, are good. They're, they're often really pretty efficient, uh, but they may not always get the absolute best result. So this uh, ends our explicit discussion of, of walks and paths and circuits and other ways of moving around a graph, although we, we will circle back to these topics a bit from time to time. Uh, in the next section, we're going to start talking about uh, a different way of representing a graph. Right. So far, we've mostly kind of focused on literally drawing pictures, uh, but that doesn't work very well for computers. So in, in the next series of lectures, we're going to talk about something called the matrix representation of graph. Uh, and that's a way of doing it that, and I says, especially say this for the uh, people who are coming at this from a computer science perspective, uh, that's a much uh, more common way for computer science applications uh, to do this kind of representation.